Okay, um, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for coming in. Uh, when we uh, look at clinical MRI scans, there's a bunch of different ways to look at the different sequences and anatomy. And I thought what I'd do this morning is go over the approach that I've used for many years, uh, because I think it's pretty efficient. It's not necessarily the best system, and you know you can develop your own, but I think like with any radiologic study, you want to develop a, a systematic search that's, that's thorough so you don't miss things, and, and also you want to be efficient. So <clears throat> what I have is a number of cases teed up in OSIRIX uh, to review kind of d directly in a PAX environment and just a few slides. And uh, one thing I wanted to point out in the beginning here is that um, Baudot uh, and helpers have a really nice uh, atlas of MSK anatomy on xrayhead.com. And um, on that, you can scroll interactively through the through this uh, sequences here. So you have coronal, sagittal, and axial. And they're nicely labeled uh, and accurately labeled, so that's always good. Um, and when you're learning MRI anatomy, I think the best way to do it is really just to sit down at an interactive site or viewer and, and may need an anatomy book or a site like this to really know what the anatomy is, but just go over the anatomy in great detail. Because in MSK, that's really what we do all day is just look at anatomy and then look at, at derangements of anatomy. <clears throat> So if I just leave this on the coronals here for a minute, I won't I won't go through all the labeling and so forth here, but but my approach has typically been to go through the the coronal scans systematically, and then I move to the sagittal scans and then the axial scans to to finish up. And the the rationale behind that is that I don't like to be jumping around between different series. I just like to keep look at one series, focus on as much as I can or one imaging plane, and then go to the next plane to try to reinforce that information. And then the final plane can show other things that maybe weren't visible on the first two planes and um, and and try to kind of refine and finish up the case. So that's the kind of general concept. So <clears throat> on, as far as slides go, they're not that exciting, but um, basically when I look at the um, – the knee, I go through the coronal images first, and I kind of have an inside-out approach where I look at the bones, the, the contours of the bones and the bone marrow, um, look for fluid, is there any fusion, and then go through the ligaments, tending to be from medial to lateral, and look at the menisci. And, you know, one needs to be uh, aware that you can, you can see meniscal tears just on one plane. So there's some tendency just to look at the sagittal plane, perhaps for the menisci, but it's better to realize that you can see a tear just on one plane. And coronal is quite good. Sagittal is also very good. And axial can be helpful as well. And then I go through the tibiofemoral cartilage and kind of look at the medial and lateral compartments. So instead of like starting out and saying, well, I'm going to look at the cartilage or I'm going to look at the menisci, I kind of go through this scan plane and look at all these different aspects of it. So let's leave it at that for uh, the coronal images now and we'll go to, uh, go to a scan here. <clears throat> so this is um, tip pretty typical of what we do in terms of imaging here at Stanford, and it's a coronal T1 weighted image, and this is a coronal proton density weighted image, and they're registered so that if we stack them and re and link them, you know, the anatomy scrolls together. So uh, let's just buzz through this pretty quickly, and I'll show you the kind of search that I, I go through, and then as we move on, we'll go through a number of cases. So I'll, I'll lead the way here, and then as I get further, I'm going to ask you to, to shout out what the, what the anatomy is. But obviously, there's femur and tibia, and it can be a little tricky to know whether you're medial or lateral. If you're just starting out, um, you may be able to notice this medial collateral ligament and say, okay, that's going to be medial. If you're not sure, you can always go posteriorly and find the fibula, and then you know you're going to be lateral there. So you look at the contours of the bones. You want to make sure that there's no osteophytes uh, on femur or tibia. 
Um, it's also worthwhile to come all the way anteriorly to look at the patella. Um, we may see a bipartite patella fracture. You might see cyst formation in the patella. You actually get a reasonable look at the quadriceps and patellar tendons on the coronal images. Um, just to get oriented, like what, what sort of big things are going on. You want to then look at the bone marrow, and mainly what I mean by that is, is there any bone marrow edema, contusions, uh, tumor, fracture, things like that? And here, you know, it's pretty normal. There's just little tiny linear structures that are just vessels. There's no abnormal bright signal to be bone marrow edema. There's this little dark, dark structure in the medial tibia here, and that's, what do you think that is? Excellent. It's just a small bone island. It's just dark, dark, just probably an area of condensed bone um, and, uh, you know, a benign incidental finding. So bones and marrow, we look through that and then try to get a sense of how much fluid is in the knee. And really the axials are going to be better for that. But this patient doesn't seem to have much extra fluid within the knee joint. Then ligaments. And I tend to go medial to lateral. So I'm going to start along the medial side here, identifying the medial collateral ligament. And it comes from the femoral attachment pretty low down, even below the scan here. And the, the MCL should be pretty uniform in its thickness from top to bottom. So the strategy is you find that ligament on a T1 weighted image, or it could be a PD image, depending on the, the uh, strategy. But find that ligament. And then you go to the fluid sensitive sequence, and you want to look for fluid around that structure. So it's kind of like find anatomy and then look for fluid around it. And this is normal. There's just minimal um, lighter signal there that may be just a fat set issue. But the ligament itself remains nice and dark on this proton density fat set image. And you follow it up and down. All right. And then going further across, um, <clears throat> next thing we're going to encounter is the posterior cruciate here in the, pretty much the midline. And what's good to do in that case is look posteriorly along the tibia here. So here's fibula, so we're pretty far back. That's the PCL attachment to the tibia. Here it is here. And it kind of comes up like this and then comes forward, and it can be kind of strandy like this. And we're going to recheck all this stuff when we get to the sagittals. ACL is next, and it, remember it comes off the lateral femoral condyle. As far as identifying the lateral femoral condyle, too, one thing that you can notice is that it's got like an irregularity along this lateral aspect here. Um, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But that's that can be a, a clue to that being lateral. But the ACL is coming off this medial part of the lateral femoral condyle. And as you're, if you're posterior here, you should be able to see bundles of the ACL coming linearly down to the tibia, just in front of the intercondylar spines here. Nicely seen on this PD here. You can see the two different bundles of the ACL. All right, and then we're going to go over to the lateral collateral ligament complex. <clears throat> and the fibular collateral actually comes off of this irregularity on the lateral femoral condyle here. So I've often likened this to like a face. I call it the cameo sign. And you can, if you imagine a a person's face like facing to the to the to the right here I guess on the screen it's be like the eye the nose and the mouth and this is the the neckline the convenience of that is that the fibular collateral comes right off the face it's like that scene out of alien or something like that so this tissue right there that's part of the fibular collateral ligament and then that's going to go down obliquely and I have to scroll posteriorly to find that fibular collateral right in here where the hand is going down to the to the fibula here. So again, I have to go find it on the T1s, and then on the PD over here, you can find it. it's a little bit of signal over here, but this ligament is pretty easy to identify if you know where to look. <clears throat> then the other lateral thing, so posteriorly, right, is the biceps femoris tendon and uh, muscle and tendon here coming down, and that has this conjoint tendon coming down to the fibula with the fibular collateral ligament. Okay, so those are posterior structures in terms of their distal part. Then coming anteriorly, you have the iliotibial band. Okay, and so here's pretty anterior. If we come a lot further forward, you can see we're, you know, almost up at the patella here. But the IT band is anterolateral, kind of a uniform band of low signal tissue <clears throat> coming right down to insert on the tibia here. 
Um, so that's ligaments. And then I turn my attention to the menisci. And here it may be helpful to zoom in just a little bit. And I'll try to window this. And I think the important thing is to make sure you look at the short echo images for the menisci. Don't get sort of tricked into just using the fluid sensitive images because in heavily T2 weighted images, you actually may have signal in a meniscal tear drop out and you can miss a tear on the, the heavily T2 weighted images. So looking at the menisci, they should be nice triangular structure that have a sharp edge and you can have little dots of internal signal in them, but the criteria for a tear is when that signal reaches the articular surface. And so remember the articular surface is, is, is the surfaces that go up against the cartilage, like along here or here, it's not the base. So the base would be the peripheral part of the meniscus and that, that can have signal that goes out to the base and that doesn't qualify as a tear, okay? You may have signal in the base that goes all the way through to the surface, articular surface, and that could be a tear. But the systematic way to look at the menisci then is to go scrolling around and to find it, say, posteriorly here where it's going into the root ligament. Posteriorly, this is medial meniscus. Here's where the posterior horn is. And then you sweep around looking for that internal signal coming around and then around to like the anterior horn here. Okay. <clears throat> Now, the, the fluid sensitive sequences are actually very helpful because whereas the short echo sequences are great for looking at intrinsic signal in the meniscus, you can tell that there's not great contrast between a little bit of fluid in the joint and the meniscus, which you do have that contrast on this, this fluid sensitive sequence. So these images are really excellent for looking at how sharp the edges of the meniscus are, okay? So as you scroll around this normal medial meniscus, it's uh, nice and sharp and you go around and you can see the whole meniscus there and make sure it's not like truncated or something. So the same kind of analysis would happen for the lateral meniscus um, and <clears throat> anterior horn scrolling around to the body of the lateral meniscus. See, this is a kind of mild increased intrasubstance signal here that could be a little bit of degeneration in the meniscus. But as long as it doesn't reach the articular surface, um, it doesn't qualify as a tear. I'm going to just kind of go to the go to meeting thing and pause for a second. If somebody's like, sounds like they're taking out the trash or something like that. Um, okay. Hi, everybody. I'm muting you all. Let's see if that works. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so go through the coronal. So we went through uh, ligaments, went through menisci and fluid. And next thing I, I tend to go through kind of in concert with going through the menisci is they're like right along the, the tibiofemoral cartilage surfaces. So that's where the fluid sensitive sequences are probably uh, the most helpful uh, or the best advantage here. Because on a T1 weighted scan, you don't really have great contrast, again, between cartilage here and fluid. Like the definition of a T1 is that that fluid is low signal relative to cartilage, at least in my sort of definition or operationally. So not much contrast there. But on this PD fat set, you have great contrast. You have, you have bright fluid adjacent to articular cartilage. And this person's cartilage is actually pretty normal. Um, there's little areas of heterogeneity along the posterior tibia. See these little black dots in there, but there's the, the thickness looks pretty good and the surfaces are pretty normal. There's actually a little bit of mild fraying of the cartilage here along the medial femoral condyle. Um, if I zoom in on that, <clears throat> you can see this little line like right there. And so that's probably some mild chondral surface irregularity but there's no big defects in the cartilage. So, so at this point, we've gone through the bones and marrow, uh, gone through the ligaments, gone through the menisci and the tibiofemoral cartilage, and that's, that's quite a bit of information. So then, um, next thing I tend to do is go through the sagittal images. And for that, <clears throat> I basically feel like we've gone through 
you know, a fair amount of the anatomy. And then what I'm going to try to do in this, um, this ser these series is try to reinforce what I saw and look for other stuff that hasn't been visible. Okay. So I'm going to go back through and go through the medial compartment, looking at the meniscus and the cartilage again. I'll sweep through the intercondylar notch, looking at the cruciate ligaments. Then I go to the lateral compartment, and then we'll turn our attention to the extensor mechanism and the patellofemoral cartilage. So if I switch this to sagittal, <clears throat> and so here's lateral compartment here, and I'm going to go over to the medial compartment. So this in, in our sequences here, this is a sagittal proton density, and this is a sagittal T2 fat sat. Okay, so they're again registered images. And, and I'm not expecting to see something unusual in the meniscus because I looked at it on coronal, though you could, like I said, pick up a tear that you didn't see on the coronal. So here we are medially. Here's that little bone island, medial meniscus. We're way out at the periphery here. And we can come around, you can sweep through like anterior horn here, come back to the body, go towards the posterior horn. And remember, you always want to track in the posterior horn and make sure it goes in and, and inserts on the tibia there for this root ligament. Okay, so that's medial meniscus looking good. Looks nice and sharp on these fluid sensitive images. The articular cartilage is this gray along the surface of the femur and the tibia here, and it's looking quite normal, nice and thick. And remember, we saw a little bit of irregularity on that surface on the coronal images. So here's like a little bit of irregularity here um, that's that superficial fraying of the cartilage. Okay, so that takes care of the medial compartment. And then you can start going into the intercondylar notch here. <clears throat> And so we encounter this big, thick, black ligament there. That's right, posterior cruciate ligament, right? And you have some of these meniscofemoral ligaments that cruise by. Here's the anterior cruciate ligament. And so we know that when we get to that at the femoral attachment site, that that should be lateral because it's really flat right along the lateral femoral condyle. So if I go sweeping laterally, here's, here's lateral. And here's that ACL coming off. And... You know, you don't always put it together in one slice, so you have to scroll back and forth, but criteria for ACL include that it obviously should be in continuity and it should be steep. So it should be as steep or steeper than this Blumenstatz line right here in the intercondylar roof. And on T2-weighted imaging, it should be low signal. Um, having said that low signal, the ACL is allowed to have more intrinsic signal in it than the PCL. So the PCL here, is typically very black and dark because it's a thicker, more robust ligament, much less likely to tear than the ACL. And you may see fluid, a little bit of signal within the ACL between the two bundles, but as long as you see intact fibers and it's only a minimal amount of signal, that's normal. So that's kind of the recheck of the cruciates. And then I go to the lateral compartment and we'll look at the lateral meniscus here, posterior horn coming out towards the body, anterior horn, <clears throat> and then looking at the articular cartilage again. And remember, there was a little bit of heterogeneity on that coronal images. There's see a little bit here and here. So there's some, some mild chondral degeneration, or it could be a little bit of chondral calcinosis starting there, uh, but nothing major, <clears throat> okay? Um, I don't usually spend time looking at this, but it, when we get way out laterally here, uh, it's a nice view of where you can actually see the orientation of the the fibular collateral ligament. So here we are very laterally, femur, tibia, fibula. And as we're posterior, this is going to be the biceps, femoris, muscle, and tendon coming down to the fibula here. And this right here, this is going to be the fibular collateral ligament. Okay, so you can actually see it kind of in profile here. It's not usually the best image to look at that, but in this case, it actually shows up really nicely. So that's why when we look at coronal images for the fibular collateral, you have to kind of scroll from like anterior and scroll backwards to kind of track it along. I can show that again a little bit more in a second. <clears throat> so that for the sagittal images kind of sweeps through, rechecks the medial and lateral compartments, and then the cruciates, and then we're kind of good to go. And we think, well, what have we not seen? And really the thing that we haven't seen is the extensor compartment and the patellofemoral compartment. <clears throat> so you've got quadriceps tendon, patella, patellar tendon, looking at the thickness and signal intensity in those on both sequences. 
And then it's really important to look at the articular cartilage of the patella and maybe even more importantly, the trochlea on that. So here, this gray along here, this is the femoral trochlea that articulates with the patellar cartilage. And if I zoom in on that <clears throat> and move it a little bit, um, the patellar cartilage is a little bit abnormal here. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of heterogeneity in it right here, a um, little bit of low signal there. So some minor surface irregularity, and you kind of have to scroll again on these fluid sensitive sequence. You can, you can see the surface pretty well. Uh, the important thing about making sure you look at it on the sagittals is that, is that you can have transversely oriented fissures or horizontally oriented fissures. And when, and when you go to the axial images, those are going to be in plane with the axial image. So you may well volume average across those and not see it very well at all. So you use this orientation as well as the axial orientation to look at the patellar cartilage. Um, note that normally the patellar cartilage is a little bit thinner up top and thicker down below. It's kind of been likened to like a pear shape, so thicker in the mid to lower portion than in the upper portion. The trochlea um, is a common spot for chondral degeneration, and so here along the femoral trochlea, it's nice and smooth and uniform in thickness and you sweep around, seeing like the midline of the trochlea here and sweeping around and all looking quite, quite good there. <clears throat> so that's the sagittal view. And if I go then to the final plane, um, that'll be the axial plane. So in that, it's sort of rechecking a number of things, but it's again, looking at the extensor mechanism, patellofemoral cartilage, I often will recheck the ligaments, and then we kind of go through some miscellaneous items like looking for Baker cysts, peasant serine bursitis, checking the popliteal fossa for vascular anomalies, and so on. <clears throat> so let's put the axial images. Um, let's just go like this. So, <clears throat> so on axial, again, we'll start at the top and go down, and you can see the uh, quadriceps tendon here coming down. A little bit of signal like quadriceps tendinopathy, mild degeneration is extremely common, uh, often asymptomatic coming down. Um, medially here, you have more muscle here. That's the vastus medialis obliquus muscle, component of the, the vastus medialis. So that's a good clue that you're medial. Um, another good clue is just as far as medial and lateral goes is the lateral patellar facet is longer, so this longer facet, that's gonna be the lateral facet, Then here's the median ridge and the medial facet. And many people have like a separate facet medially called the odd facet. So there's a little uh, angle right here to here, odd facet, medial facet. We don't usually worry about <clears throat> distinguishing those two facets, but we talk about medial facet, median ridge, and lateral facet. Um, it's important when you're on the axials looking at the patellofemoral cartilage not to get fooled by being too high. And so if I, if I show it this way, so the green line here um, references where the axial image is. And notice that if, if we're at this level on the axial image here, that what we're actually looking at is the upper part of the patella and some patellar cartilage, this stuff here. But then in front of the femur, it's not even cartilage yet. It's actually prefemoral fat, okay? And that fat's pretty low signal on fat suppress. You don't actually get to the trochlear cartilage until you go further down, like right down, like right about here. And then basically what you want to be looking for is you want to make sure you get to this gray kind of homogeneous looking tissue that's the articular cartilage. It's, it's a, one of the most common pitfalls for people to look at an image like this and say, wow, there's a big defect in the cartilage of the trochlea, but it's in fact just being faked out by that fat up there. Okay, <clears throat> so patellar, um, you know, bony anatomy, patellar cartilage, um, sweeping through looking at the trochlear cartilage and then looking at the patellar tendon and uh, quadriceps tendon in axial. And then there's a number of other things one can check, okay? so. And we'll look at some other examples here in a minute, but things like medial collateral ligament. So here we are medially. This is the MCL here. And notice that it's kind of a broad band coming from the, from the femur. Let me switch this one back to coronal here. Um, <clears throat> find that MCL. 
So there's the MCL on coronal. And so here it is on axial. And if you have an injury to it, they tend to be proximal. And you can kind of restage and look better intrinsically at the ligament on the axials because you're cross-sectional to it. So there's the MCL followed down. It's pretty thin as you go down. And it goes all the way down really fairly far below the knee. <clears throat> um, maybe one of the most important things to check on the axials is the anterior cruciate ligament. And so here, lateral femur, this black band right there, that's all ACL. And it should be like, you know, centimeter and a half or so in AP diameter. Because remember, it was coming off the inner part of that lateral femoral condyle and sweet, sweeping down. So that's ACL there. And it's critical to get good at looking at it here because if you, if you have injury to the ACL, uh, it's typically proximal and you're almost always going to see abnormality on the axial. So you got to use all three planes to kind of reinforce and, and refine and grade what you think about ACL tears. So ACL from here all the way down to here to this foot plate here, and it kind of, see it kind of fanning out. Um, the PCL is actually nicely seen here as well. So here's the PCL posteriorly, should be like a thick black band ovoid structure attaching on the tibia. And then here's the horizontal part of it here, okay? Um, fibular collateral ligament, also you can troubleshoot on the axials. And I think this is actually probably one of the most trickiest ligament to see often or if, you, if you're learning in training is remember that cameo sign so here's fibular collateral ligament and it's coming down like so and heading posteriorly so in the axials you should be able to identify it as a round kind of ovoid cord of a low signal and it's coming right up to the femur here and then here's fibular collateral here and you can really nicely follow it going down, down, down to join up with this tendon um, or insert on the fibula next to it, that conjoint tendon of the biceps femoris here. So this is biceps femoris, fibular collateral, and then the IT band is anteriorly. So one structure I haven't mentioned so far um, because it's, it's, it's not that critical, um, it's not injured that often, but it's, it's the popliteus muscle and tendon, and that's, that's this structure that goes um, posteriorly along the back of the knee. And so for posterior, it's these ten, this tendon that's coming up and wrapping around, and that's actually inserting into this little, into the neck of the cameo, like right in here. So if you look at the axials, the popliteus muscle <clears throat> is just in front of the um, popliteal artery here, this popliteal fossa, tendon inside. And you come up here, tendons going around, and it's cruising around the lateral aspect of the knee to insert there. Okay. <clears throat> then we look at some miscellaneous things. We look, say we've got a good diagnosis. Um, you know, is there a fluid in the region of a Baker cyst between like medial gastroc and semimembranosus? Is there fluid around these tendons, these pes anserine tendons? Um, looking at the popliteal fossa, look at the the gastrocnemius muscles on either side. You could see injury in those, but mainly we're just checking to make sure that the vessels make it through without any, any kind of deviation or possible entrapment by the, by the muscles. And then the nerves are also here. So here's the, this is the tibial nerve and the common perineal nerve there on the axials. Um, so to summarize, I like, that's like, 30 minutes of, uh, of a search that hopefully would only take like two minutes if you're systematic about it, <clears throat> but um, that tends to be what I do. And so we'll look at some cases here, but let me just go back real quick. And again, I'm not trying to indoctrinate anybody with saying this is the best thing to do, but it's just an approach. So I look at the coronal images for the bone marrow, fluid, ligaments, menisci, and then the cartilage in the compartments. And then the sagittal, I kind of reinforce what I've thought about the compartments, sweep through the cruciates again to recheck those, lateral compartment, and then turn my attention to the extensor mechanism and patellofemoral joint. On the axials, kind of refine what I think about extensor, patellofemoral articulation, often recheck ligaments, look for miscellaneous stuff, and then um, hit sign, okay? <laughs>